Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids147. I'm going to do a little bit of a whip and chat today. Um, but before I sort of get into it, get going, I do need to determine what square I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the mystery painting that I haven't had a chance to start yet. So I'm going to use my Tiny Decisions app. Um, I have added on the extra two to make it 18 because for some reason I got 16 in my head. So we'll see which number it ends up at. Are we going for the top, bottom, middle? We're going for the top. So it's number two. So what I do need to do is use my clips. So I tend to work on this easel whether I'm doing it on camera or whether I'm working um, on my table on the couch and if I need the top end then I put my clips at the top and this just hangs off the side of my table it's not too long that it had hit my knee if I'm working on a bigger painting I tend to roll it so I'm just going to tuck that underneath for the purposes of this whip and chat and to be able to get to that square and this is where I'm starting I have no idea what this one is. The symbols are in black and white. Um, but by the looks of it, we're starting with 3756, which is sort of, it's, it's a white with a hint of green, I'd say. It looks very white if you have a lot of blue. Um, now, when I cut these, I don't necessarily know where the lines are on the canvas underneath. So when it comes to the point where it's, it's cut halfway through, what I like to do is I like to just lift it up that little bit just to get the row that's half and half, just so that I can sort of tuck those ones on and then I'll push it down so I don't end up getting... Um, me zoom in and I have to do some shuffling yes I'm not in the best position for a big zoom in let's have a, let's have a move there we go so what I do is when it's cut halfway through I just peel this back and do it there if it's only a little bit like it is at this sort of bottom corner it's only a tiny amount that's fine um, but if if I've got a nice chunk of the section visible but just a little bit's covered up, then I'll peel it back. And that tends to be the way that I work when I'm working in blocks like this. So I do have um, a few more questions that have been asked that I can go through for this whip and chat. But firstly, I do wanna say I'm sorry this wasn't up on Sunday as expected. Megan and I were working on a diamond painting log book, which is one of the new things we're hoping to bring to the shop very soon. And we got into it and we got distracted and we were being productive. And it just, it got to that point in the sort of morning, early afternoon on Sunday, where it was too late to be able to get the whole video recorded and edited and uploaded before four. So it was a decision between posting to say, sorry guys, the video is gonna be late, um, was one option. However, we were still in the flow of, of getting things finalized on the logbook. So because of that, I took the decision to carry on with what we were doing and to not put a video up on Sunday. It would have potentially happened if it wasn't for the fact that I also took Saturday off because me and hubby um, nipped, nipped out, you know, spent quite a lot of the day out and about rather than in the house. So I hadn't sort of got into video mode either, I don't think. Um, so yeah, sorry that wasn't up. So what I've done is I've just scooted that over 
Um, I'm actually doing it on the Monday night because I'm working tomorrow. Um, so do it on the Monday night so that it's ready for you guys for tomorrow and I can get all the uploading and stuff done. But yes, hopefully the, the logbook will be ready as soon as we can make it available. At the moment, we are waiting on some of the supplies to come in. We've, we had enough, you know, to be able to do a mock-up and to check that everything works as we wanted it to. However, to buy in the quantity that we need to be able to sell in the shop at a fair price, because of course I could order enough for a personal project, no problems at all, but it would be more expensive um, because I would only be buying a few. So to be able to keep the cost as low as we can, I do need to order in bulk, which often means ordering it from abroad for some of the elements. So it'll take a little while for them to reach us. We are gonna try and get a lot of, you know, the work that we're doing ourselves prepared beforehand so that as soon as the last of the supplies do arrive, we can get it up on the website as soon as possible. But it all takes time, does it not? So yeah, that's quite an exciting thing that's coming. Um, trays, the diamond painting trays are back available in on the website. Um, there can be a few days delay depending on the volume of orders. I think at the moment we're running on, I think that the tray sort of gets printed the day after the order was made. We're very, very close. We haven't quite managed to get any pink ones on the shelf for any period of time. Um, we managed to get a couple of grey ones on the shelf, but it didn't last longer than 24 hours before they were shipped out. But it's definitely a lot quicker. We have also limited the quantity. We don't want anybody to be waiting as long as the pre-orders were because it's not marked as a pre-order. But there could be a few days delay depending on how many orders there are. Um, but they are back available in the shop. And hopefully, um, depending on how things go and how the printers behave, hopefully they will stay available. Um, and we won't have to sort of turn them off for any any period of time, but we'll see how it goes. I'm not doing a video announcing just the trays and explaining just the trays um, and, until we have a nice stock. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of website updates, I think. Only other update before I get into the questions from the last whip and chat. So, oh no, maybe the whip and chat before actually. So the whip and chat before last, I did ask for your guys' opinion on, you know, the likes of, I've been requested, you know, whether I've got a Patreon, um, whether I do anything like that. Now, as I discussed in my last whip and chat, I have looked into Patreon, however, don't feel that I can reasonably do more than my seven videos or my video a day that already goes up. Um, I do work full time. So while I may be able to film, you know, more than seven videos some weekends, it, it allows me to get ahead of myself and therefore give myself time off from making videos in the future for the rest of everyday life. I don't feel I could commit to making more videos exclusive for Patreon and I don't want to take away from the content that I bring that I have on YouTube that's free. Um, you know, to people that may not otherwise be able to afford that type of entertainment. Um, and yeah, so 
things will stay the same in relation to my videos on YouTube. I don't have any plans to do anything, you know, that involves a subscription to see more videos. At, at this time, that's, that's not something that I'm interested in doing. But a few people have asked, you know, and I did mention last time the likes of Buy Me A Coffee, which I've heard of, which does give the people the option to, as it says on the tin, buy me a coffee, um, which some people do like to do as sort of a, a thank you for the videos if it's something that they're financially able to do. Um, so I have set one of those up based on, on the feedback you, you guys gave me on the last video. So on my website, which is full of free information for everybody, um, as well as the shop, but there is also loads of free information on there. Um, at the bottom of the website, which is 4kids at 147.com, and will be linked below, right at the bottom of the website now, there is a button to buy me a coffee should you so wish. Very apt for me as well because I do nothing but drink coffee. Um, and, and I'm sure many of the funds will go towards keeping me in a coffee supply. But yeah, just to let you guys know that that's there. It's not a subscription. It is purely voluntary um, if people want to. So I think that's the updates from me in regards to the shop and following on from previous whip and chats. If I have forgotten anything, do note it in the comments below and I will do my best to refer back when I do the next whip and chat. I am doing a whip and chat a day throughout the month of June. So I am gonna be doing one painting throughout the month of June and I'll do a section per day and I think is it next week no the weekend after um, so a couple of weekends before it starts but weekend after next I will be preparing my canvas and that means you can either join me preparing your canvas that weekend or if you've got commitments, you could do it any point in that week or the following weekend before it becomes the 1st of June. If you want to join in, you don't have to join in. By all means, you can carry on with whatever painting you're doing. But I am going to be doing a painting advent calendar style. It's not one that I've bought a particular painting for, like I did last year, so it is going to be one out of my stash so start think if you want to join in start thinking about what painting you want to use or do that you can split up into 30 and i'm going to be using the tiny decisions app just like i did on this painting to decide what square i'm doing so the picture may come together it may be that I have a few blocks together. It maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Tiny Decisions is going to decide for me. And there are many different apps out there with sort of a decision maker wheel if you want to join in. But there'll be more details of that to come. So let me have a look at the questions and um, I just sort of gave my last post on Facebook a little bit of a bump but um, firstly before I do get into the questions one other thing I also need to do is I do need to say hello to Fraser. Fraser? Fraser. I do need to give him a shout out so hello Fraser. Um, I hope you are enjoying this video big waves um, and I hope you're you're letting your mum watch the video or watching it with her and playing nice while she watches um, but yeah hello to Fraser 
Uh, if I could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Now, my hubby actually saw this question before I did and read it out to me. And I just thought he was asking me a random question. So I answered with speed. I think speed. I would love to, in effect, get more time by doing things faster. So not necessarily, you know, my videos or anything like that, but wouldn't it be nice to just spend five minutes cleaning the whole house rather than a lot longer? That's what I could just imagine myself doing, zipping around the whole house and it all being done in a flash. So yeah, I think quick answer is definitely speed. That could, that would be a very, very useful superpower. Though I'm sure we will all take the option of more than one superpower if we can. Um, so thank you so much for that question, Ria. And of course, for the request for the shout out for Fraser. I like, I like the fact that um, family members get caught up into my videos too. All I can say to any family members of diamond painters that are caught up, make sure you allow them their time to diamond paint. It helps, helps, helps them to de-stress um, and I think they should be allowed as much time as they need to diamond paint. Um, so Janet Morris said, what part of England do you live in? Uh, and can you let us know about your a bit about your city or town? So I live in the north east, northwest, let's get it right, northwest of England um, in a town called Warrington, which is in between Manchester and Liverpool. Um, the, I didn't actually, I wasn't born here. Um, but I have lived here for most of my life. Um, apart from it being a very, very busy town, it has grown a lot bigger and a, and a lot busier. Um, it does actually have, at the town hall, we have golden gates that were not used by the Queen. I'm not sure of the reason why, but they were not used by the Queen. Um, and they came to our town. So we have some golden gates. Rejects from the Queen, I think, but who's arguing? We have the fancy gates. Apart from that, it was primarily, I think, an industrial town. I don't know a huge amount about the history. Um, I think it was, you know, started off as more of an industrial town and now it is it is a very very busy town and could quite probably do with being a city but yeah that's where I live uh, it's very handy to get to quite a few places it's definitely very near the motorways oh and very near Ikea which I'm very happy about thank you very much we got the first Ikea maybe that was a better thing to say Ignore the Golden Gates. Uh, we were the town that got the first IKEA in the UK. And yes, I've loved going to that place ever since. If anybody's seen my craft room, and not all of my house, but there, there is probably IKEA furniture in pretty much every room in the house in some form or another, even if it's only small. Maybe not the, oh no, I was going to say not the kitchen, but the bar stools are from there. So yeah, every room in the house probably has some form of Ikea furniture. Um, yeah, love that place, and especially my craft room. Uh, Deborah Adams, so have you ever thought about buying from Spell Queen? I hear their toolkits are really impressive. Um, I haven't yet. That doesn't mean I won't go looking so I do still like to ensure that I have got you know unboxing videos from different companies different places or different storage even if it's things you can pick up off Amazon um, that's sort of what I like the Wednesday unboxings to be it's something a little bit different 
whereas Monday and Friday tends to be more from a China company, um, of which quite a few of them are the same, but they do so many different paintings. I get to showcase what's out there, um, but I'll definitely put them on my list to look. I've not heard of them or seen them, but I will go looking. I probably do need to do some shopping soon, even if it's just to get videos ready for in a, in a month or so. Um, and then Deborah's, or in fact, Deborah's got a few questions. Have you ever knitted or crocheted? Crocheting, I would love to do. I just need, I think I need somebody to teach me. I know there are videos out there, but I don't seem to get it that way. I did try watching a video, but I couldn't quite seem to grasp it. And I think I need to be near somebody who's done it or does it so they can tell me which part I'm doing wrong. Or maybe I just need to dedicate more time to it. I didn't actually dedicate a lot of time. Um, knitting, I can do if it's like riding a bike and, it, and you don't lose the knowledge. Um, I used to do it quite a bit as a child. My nan taught me. My nana, bless her little cotton socks. Um, yeah, my nana who is currently lives in Australia. She taught me how to knit. Though I don't think I rem I, I could I think I used to be able to do a pearl a knit stitch and a pearl stitch was pretty much the extent of what I learnt. I never particularly learnt any patterns. So yeah, if my life depended on it, I could knit, but I haven't done it for years, years and years. There's just so many hobbies and just not enough time, really. That is the problem with the world. And that, that's another thing that speed might be a good thing for. I could practice and learn how to crochet and knit myself a blanket super quick. Because that's all I wanted to learn how to crochet for was to make myself in a blanket, a blanket in colours that I liked. After that, I probably would have stopped again, depending on how addictive it was and how much I enjoyed it. But that was my initial plan. Teach myself to crochet so I can make myself a blanket. But unfortunately, that's not happened yet. Uh, and then Deborah does mention the diamond painting log book. So she's excited to hear about the log book. Um, do you have ideas of what it will be like? So since that question was asked, we have, we've had a few sort of evenings messing about with it, but Sunday we sort of really got stuck into finalizing layouts and getting margins set right and all that sort of stuff. Um, and there was a lot of thought that went into the logbook because I don't know if any of you guys that watch could be a bit like, a bit like me in regards to the organisation and being a little bit, should we say, fussy. I can be a little bit fussy. So, I wanted, we wanted to create something that people could, to a certain extent, adapt to suit them. So while we can't change, you know, some of the things that are necessarily on a particular page, we didn't want it to just be a logbook to record diamond paintings that you're doing slash have done. We wanted it to be sort of, you know, everything you're diamond painting, all combined with the ability for people to remove pages and add pages, depending on their personal preference, slash how much it's used, slash how many paintings they have. So we have done memory card saved and it's a good job because I didn't realise that my painting was that far up 
<laughs> yeah, so we have done a few different categories within um, the logbook that we're going to do. So it's going to be A5 in size. It has a few different sections. So it does have my logbook, which actually will go across two A5 pages. So it will be like a sheet of A4 paper um, with space for one side will be a space for picture and for notes and or for notes. Or you could stick your ledger in there, you know, depending on what you like to keep. Or you could purely use it for writing down more of your thoughts. Um, and then we have the actual logbook side of things, where we've tried to cover the things that most people want to record. Um, and that's broken down into sections. So there's a section about the canvas. There's a section about the drills. There's a section about the delivery and the store it's been purchased from. I've got some rubbish or something in that tray. Let me get the diamonds out. And then I'll throw the rubbish on the floor behind me. Don't need rubbish. Um, so yeah, it's got the sections to record all of that. Drills, delivery, overall impressions, a mixture of tick boxes and where you write stuff down. There's all sorts of different bits in there so that's one section that's sort of the bulk section is the logbook but then we also have a sheet for my stash so you can write down all the diamond paintings you either have or maybe have already completed pre-logging all the information so you just have it in a, a list form and you can either mark when it's completed or maybe put the date that you completed it if you know that. Um, so there's my stash, then there is my spares. There's actually two sections to my spares. So one is for you to mark down your spares in square and round. And then there's another duplicate section for you to mark um, the DMC numbers for your special diamonds or your AB diamonds. So that will cover any rhinestones that tend to use the DMC numbers. We have also included on there the Diamond Art Club AB numbers in that section. So you can either record them as their DMC number equivalent, or you can record them under the code, so it's sort of a checkbox. If you don't have specials or ABs, you can just take that section out. What else do we have? We have a section for my wish list. So you can mark down things that you want to purchase, the store that you want to purchase them from, and then you can mark when you have bought it, and then of course, add it to your my stash. We also have a time tracker in there so that you can, if you want, you can track the time for your paintings. So it gives you the option to put the date, the time you started time of painting, the time you finished, and then there's a column for you to put the total time you spent in that session, and then you can add them up when you get to the bottom of the page. I think they were all the sections that we put in. So there's my stash, my wish list, my spares, two versions of my spares, my logbook, and my time tracker. Yeah, I think that was them all. And they're all in a binder. Um, so as I say, you can remove them. If you want to maybe only have it as a logbook and nothing else, you can take those other sheets out. And we are hoping to have, or we're planning on having, the sheets available to purchase as well. So if you do use it primarily for logging and you find that you've used all your sheets up, you can purchase some more to add them in. Um, if you prefer to take out some of them, you know, fill them up with something else, you've got that sort of option. We're still working on the final bits of it. And as I said before, we are waiting for supplies. 
So we're going to be primarily waiting on the supplies to be able to offer it in the shop. Um, but I know what we're like. Once the supplies arrive, we will probably not stop creating until, you know, they're ready. We don't like to hold back on things. Which is why we tell you guys the minute we've, we've put a, a dummy one together. Um, but I do thank you everybody for putting their sort of ideas of everything that you that they wanted and I've just lost that whip and chat post sorry I've just lost the post where I was reading from was it that one? Oh yes it was that one okay I found it again um so yeah we will we will get that up as soon as we can once supplies have arrived and hopefully we'll have some more sneak peeks up on the Facebook group. So by all means join the Facebook group. It will be linked in the description or you can go to my website 4kids at 147.com. If you scroll to the bottom there is a link to the Facebook group there. Do make sure that you agree to the rules. There are only two but do make sure that you agree to them, otherwise um, you won't be approved to join the group. And that is, those rules are basically there to say, one, play nice. If we do, you know, not that we have, but if we do have, you know, any, any trouble that continues over a period of time, then it will result in post removal or removal from the group based on that rule and the other one is no spamming so don't join the group if you're just wanting to sell your wares and um, make your own group for that but yeah do make sure that you agree to the rules to be able to get in but there's loads of people on there and i do give sneak peeks for things as and when i can okay so i've got three more questions um, and then I will have to pause this whip and chat at that point just so that I can make sure I can get this uploaded and stuff before I go to bed um, because I do have work tomorrow unfortunately uh, but we've got two questions from Cheryl so question one how do you decide which items you keep from those sent to you for review so I do get sent, as many of you know, items to unbox that tend to be the Monday and the Friday videos, tend to be items that are sent to me. Now, the majority of those, unless a seller, you know, wants to add in an extra item that's, you know, new to their site or they're trying to promote, most of those are picked by me. So I like every single painting and I don't even think those that have been sent by the seller I've not liked. I like every single painting that is sent to me but I do not have the time to do every single painting that is sent to me. So sometimes I think it can depend on my mood, um, the day that I'm you know doing the unboxing videos but I tend to just go for the ones that I really love and I'm like, do you know what? I will really enjoy doing that. I absolutely adore that picture. They tend to be the ones that I keep. The others tend to go in giveaway boxes and sometimes I have to be harsh with myself. So when, when I tend to get deliveries, I tend to do the videos in a, in a bit of bulk if I can, over, over the course of a day. And that makes me be a little bit more um, harsh with myself, I suppose. Not even maybe harsh with myself. But because I've done a few unboxing videos on one day, I have more paintings in front of me, which means I make myself choose my favourite out of all of them or my two favourites out of all of them, or maybe even my three, depending on, on the amount that I've got. 
Um, and yeah, by limiting myself and saying, okay, out of this lot that I've got here, you know, I can pick two to keep. Um, then I tend to just pick my favourites out of those two. And I send the rest in giveaways. So we all win in the end. Um, and I'm sure, you know, eventually I will see some of the pictures completed on the Facebook group so that I can enjoy them from afar. Um, have you ever tried sparklers or quad cubes from DP with sparklers to enhance your designs? Um, I've not tried from them specifically. I have once, I think in the past, switched a colour for an AB um, and done an AB. That is probably something that I should do more you know, maybe get a few more ABs or maybe have a look at the paintings that I do have in my stash and order some ABs to go with it. I do think maybe that winter tree from Star Raw might be a nice one to bring some ABs into. Maybe I just need to have a look, you know, take a, take a few minutes to go through the paintings that I have and see if any would would suit ABs and substitute them when I'm kitting up because I think the thought of adding them while I'm doing it I don't think I think I'd just forget to be honest I would forget to do them so it's not so it's something that I've done once but it is something that I do need to do more of, I think so maybe if I set myself that as a challenge for a video maybe I'm more likely to get it done it's normally the way I work okay and then the last question while I use up the last of these drills out of my tray turn my tray around so that I can get the last few is have you ever tried glow-in-the-dark drills so I have some glow-in-the-dark um, Margaret was very kind to send me a huge batch of glow in the dark. I haven't used them yet. Again, I think it's something that I need to consciously kit up with. However, um, Megan and I have purchased some heaven and earth design canvases. I know what am I like? I, I haven't even finished my other one. Um, Though, to be fair, they are mainly Megan's. Um, a couple of designs, I think. I can't even remember whether we ordered two or three. But I know I only have one. Um, Megan may have one or two. And one of them that she's ordered, she specifically wants to put the AB drills, uh, the glow-in-the-dark drills in. So they will feature um, when... Again, either of us will get to do it. I'm not sure. Um, but I do have them and it is something that I do need to look at more. I mean, even looking here, there's potentially something in this pattern that would work wonderful with, with potentially ABs or glow in the dark. But because this is a mystery, I don't know what painting this is. So I don't want to substitute substitute um the 3756 for glow in the dark which i could probably get away with without knowing what parts of it are going to glow in the dark so i think i'll put it on my list to have a look through the canvases i've got um and maybe add a little note to them to say would look good with this ab or kit it up with this ab or with this glow in the dark and then when it comes the time for me to do that painting, I'll add some AB or glow to the dark, glow in the dark to it um, and see how that goes. But yeah, it's definitely something I'd like to do, but I just, I do have so many different things I would love to do. Um, and I enjoy, you know, that sort of vary up the diamond painting in, in little ways that just keep it fresh. And I just haven't got enough hours in the day. So we'll see how we go. 
Um, but yeah, I've got half of that section done, which is not bad because it is a very big section, this one. Um, thank you all for your questions and thank you all for watching, for being here, for supporting. It is all greatly appreciated and I do love reading through your comments. Some days, it takes me, sometimes it takes me a couple of days to get to them, but sometimes I get to them a bit quicker. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and for your, you know, support with the delay for this video. But what well, we'll let you know as well, coming up, um, I have decided I'm kissing up the duck. I don't know when I'm going to get to do it, but I am kitting it up so that if I want to do a section of it, I can. Um, so do stay tuned for that. That will be coming this week. But yeah, I will speak to you all again soon.